It's week 51, July 25th. So happy summertime here in Atlanta, Canada. And what an exciting thought. And, and you know, garlic is our, our theme this week. Really excited about it being garlic. And we, we often talk about what's in season. And this is what is being harvested here in Atlanta, Canada. And I'm proud to say mom and I grew these from fresh from our garden. And I think the cloves came from Roslyn's sister, it might be. Roslyn, give me a thumbs up on that one. So love the journey of the garlic, of, of how it's coming to be. And you'll see, we got those yesterday. They're a few different sizes. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll get this little guy out. You know, and I think this is, if I hold one up, this is what they look like a little later when they dry up a bit more. Oh yeah, mom's got, mom's holding up to make the point. There was a bigger one here. Thank you, mom. We'll get the bigger demo out. This was one of the bigger ones. Now look. <laughs> so what has to happen with garlic, which is interesting. So I'm not going to be using my garlic today. So this needs to go on a drying rack. You either, they either hang it up this way. Mine's going on a flat drying rack for about five weeks till they start to look a little bit more like this one so that they will store longer. So it's not that you can't eat it because you can, um, but waiting allows us to have them to keep longer. I'll probably end up eating one early. Come on, we know that's probably gonna happen. But for today, these are gonna be going down on the drying rack. So we're really excited about what that is. And I'll tell you at all the farm stands, all the farmers markets, you've been seeing, and we've been cooking with garlic scapes as well, right? So these wonderful mm -hmm. little scapes that grow off the garlic. So it's wonderful <coughs> because it's one of those plants that you can eat a lot of it. And we mm -hmm. wanna encourage people to eat as much as they can, as we say, from root to tip. And, um, and there's so many different garlic recipes. So we're featuring some exciting different pieces today and um, a very traditional, we're gonna make some bruschetta here. And cause of course, what a great highlighted feature garlic king on that. Mom's gonna help me with that. And a technique we're gonna use with some toasting of the bread. And I made a garlic soup, which by the way, this entire kitchen really smells like garlic. And it is absolutely fabulous. Richard, I really wish he didn't, he wasn't one of those individuals that had a little bit of that garlic allergy. But uh, for anybody else, yum. We'll be talking about the garlic soup. And of course we made a great garlic aioli, which means you can really put that on anything that you want. We'll talk a little bit about what that looks like. Uh, Jacqueline has made a great, um, I think it's chicken, I wanted to say pork, but it's a chicken dish or a pork dish, but with a, a, a garlic and a sweet recipe that's gonna come together. And of course, garlic's been around for thousands of years. Richard's gonna bring us in on some unique facts about garlic and what it really means. And it's so healthy and it is so commonly used in a lot of our Asian uh, food for that really great seasoning. And a lot of that inspired flavors that we use here absolutely comes from our, our uh, sisters and brothers in Asia. So I love having Jacqueline share some of those recipes. And besides Jacqueline, the way you fry garlic up regularly, that's just yummy. So we love that you do that. We know that garlic's a big piece. We've got Maureen, uh, Richard's mom, who's adventuring today in Ontario. And what I love is her and her sister, Kathy, have had quite an adventure in discovering products that have garlic in them. And they have a little bit of a uh, snacking bar of some cheese and some different pieces all infused with garlic. They're gonna share with us here shortly. And of course, we wouldn't be Atlantic Canada if we weren't featuring some seafood with some garlic. And we're really excited that Rosalind's gonna bring us a nice garlicky oh, rinse dish from uh, here in New Brunswick. So we were traveling this week in Lunenburg. Rosalind and I were down at the school. And I can say all the restaurants are open, the patios are full, and there's just unbelievable amounts of opportunities to go out and eat and experience fresh Atlantic Canadian food. And we ate at this little place called Rascal's Run. It's a burrito bar. We'll give them a shout out. 
and we had uh, one of their open face burrito bowls. And we both agreed it was probably the best burrito bowl ever had anywhere. So big yeah. shout out to them. And he had a good use of some garlic and some of his sauces and spices. But you know what? He has some of his herbs and growing right out front. And what I love that he had, he had a big bush of these beautiful garlic chives. And we've talked about those before because these are flat. So unlike a regular chive, so we're going to be featuring garlic chives in our recipes today. But it's really beautiful when you have the chance to explore Lunenburg and go through that you always see these restaurants with amazing pieces. And our favorite spot that we go to at the Knot, um, I can also say that uh, we've had some nice uh, curry mayo and some other things because we continued some french fry adventures this week with our team. So it was a great eating adventure with Tree Lunenburg and we look forward to keep sharing more of those. But um, one of the things we're gonna start off with today is I'm gonna start with the garlic soup, which is only gonna take me a few minutes to go through. And then Rosalind, if you're ready, we're gonna go over to you for some shrimp. Sounds good. I'm gonna take a sip of my Funday Fog. Jacqueline, I always think of this when I have the Funday Fog tea. I hope that's what's in your cup or you probably have pretty much run out at this point. And fairy, yes, of course. And this is the Earl Grey tea and it's got um, corn flour, elderberry, and it just has a hint of lavender. Can I see that? And I want to say a thank you to my best friend, Kelly, who we were chatting about earlier. And the other thing that's blooming all across Atlantic Canada right now is lavender fields and fields and fields. So Kelly brought me that to be enjoying. So there's a little piece and it made me think of that with my fun day fog tea. And Jacqueline, when you get here and then Ferry and all of our guests that come to Canada, there, you can go and pick all your own lavender in fields all over Atlantic Canada. And right now, the other thing is open is berry you pick. So you go pick your own berries. So that's another really beautiful thing that's happening across Atlantic Canada. And right now, you're going to see a lot of raspberries. And I think Roz, I'm going to throw it over to her. She might be able to help me with some of the other berries that you, could, you pick right now. But we are featuring blueberries soon. So I think the you picks for those are maybe in another couple of weeks, but we have a blueberry episode coming up. So let's talk about this garlic soup. I'm gonna tell you, the garlic soup was inspired by a book that has garlic on the front. So that's fitting from the Niagara region. And this is the beautiful picture of what it looks like here. But this particular soup had a bit more dairy and things in it. And I just did a little adaptation on it. So. Here's what it looks like completely done. I have already tasted it and it is silky and beautiful and gorgeous. And here's how simple this is. Now, get ready for garlic. <laughs> it starts with one cup of peeled and just chopped garlic. It doesn't have to be chopped. I don't recommend that you chop it too small. And I'll tell you what I usually do. And I'm gonna give a little trick here as to how to get garlic out for this particular recipe. So we're gonna get mom to give me a hand here with the camera, or potentially me. Mom, where's my big white knife? So here's a little trick. So when you get the clove out, I'm gonna get this camera down here. Hopefully you can see my board through all the other wonderful things I have here. So clear a space. And in all honesty, I cut the little nubby end off that was growing out of the ground. And then you take it really flat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really smash my knife down on top of it. It still has the skin on. It's often called a silver skin or a soft skin garlic. So I'm gonna take the side of my knife very carefully. Make sure the pointy ends away from you, please. We don't want anybody cutting themselves. And then I'm gonna take the palm of my hands and I'm gonna hit it. And it hit a little harder. There. And what that wonderfully does, and you watch this, it, it, I'm going to look at that. It should fall right out, which it will. There. So there's the little skin. Oops. And then there's my wonderful piece of garlic. Ooh, does that ever smell good? There we go. And then all you need to do is run your knife through that for a rough chop. Because you're going to use an entire cup 
<laughs> of garlic in this recipe. I don't want you to cut it really small because you're gonna put it in the pan with some oil on a medium heat. And what happens is the little pieces might burn. So we don't want that to happen. So don't dice it for this particular recipe. You could just give it a good crush and then run your knife through that maybe twice and then fill that measuring cup full of a cup of garlic. And you're gonna use about, I used about a quarter of a cup of olive oil in the bottom of the pan, the pot that I used. I'll show you the size pot that I used. So I used about a quarter of a cup of olive oil in that, and that is a probably one and a half liter pot. We'll make sure that this goes down. So this is easy. So the, the garlic goes into the oil with a little bit of salt and pepper, and you're gonna simmer that for about five minutes. And you're gonna watch the garlic get a little bit golden. So, and you're gonna see it turn. So don't walk away from that pot <laughs> because it can happen fast. There's Jacqueline smiling. She's a master garlic fryer. And, and just as soon as that happens, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put a cup of Chardonnay wine into it. You can buy a cooking Chardonnay if you would like. Um, and those who are up in the Ontario region, some beautiful white Chardonnays. And I just should have a glance at this one. I actually think I am using a Canadian wine right now. So a, a cup of that. And you're going to let that simmer with the garlic for about five minutes. What that's going to do is it's going to take some of that alcohol content out. So it's really important that you put the wine first, five minutes, just to let that and you will really be able to smell that bit of the alcohol that comes out with that beautiful flavor of the Chardonnay. By the way, that's a Chardonnay Pinot Grigio mix. <laughs> I didn't have Chardonnay only. So I think that that's, it's fine to use a, a decent white wine to be able to put that in there. The next thing I'm gonna add is two cups of chicken stock. So two cups of chicken stock goes in and then one cup of diced potato. So I used uh, nice fresh local potatoes that we get from Angela here at Friday Farms Local Harvest. And so again, just cube them up and then you're gonna simmer that until your potatoes cook through. So it's probably gonna simmer, depending on how big you cut your potato, it's probably gonna simmer for about another 20 minutes. And then basically what you're gonna do at this point is you're gonna take your blender. We usually use one of the hand blenders which we've said a few times because you have hot liquid. So transferring hot liquid to another blender can be dangerous. These are a wonderful kitchen tool. And then you're just gonna blend that soup up. And it comes out into, oh, just before that, I did forget one ingredient. You're gonna put a can of coconut milk. I'm thinking, wait a minute, it's creamy. So you're boiling the potato in the wine and the chicken stock just before you're not gonna boil it in the coconut milk. So I wanna be clear, wine, wine, chicken stock and potato. And once that's all done, add your one can of coconut milk at the end. That's your entire recipe. So it gives a nice quantity because you can see how many cups of liquid went into it. And then outside of that, I recommend that you finish it off and it has a beautiful consistency because the potato gave it that little bit of thickening. And I think that that's what gives it. So it's not a thick pureed soup, but I usually take this and I finish it with a drizzle of olive oil on the top. Use a really good olive oil with that one and top it off with a couple of fresh chives, which I'm gonna have a hard time with. So while we, there, and then my mother's doing my favorite and she's getting me out a pair of scissors. So there we go. There's your beautiful garlic and potato soup. Very delicious. Mom's getting that good old picture. So we're gonna get some garlic toast ready so that when we have this, we've got something beside, but I can tell you what else would be delicious with this soup on the side, Rosalind. Thinking a little bit of the dish that you're making. All right, so I'm gonna put that over to you and Thank let's you. talk about some shrimp. Perfect. Hi, everybody. Welcome again this week. 
So there's one other thing I'd like to say because Michelle brought in is doing uh, garlic Skypes. What I'm doing with my garlic Skypes is I'm gonna cut them very small and I'll show you the size format. And they get, you put them, oh, I don't know if you can see this, but they're very small and I'm going to air dry them. So, and then I'm gonna use them in the winter time to add them to soups or dishes. So I'm going to cut them up very thin and of course, remember when you're using a garlic Skype, uh, do not use this portion, the top portion, because it's very coarse or very, uh, it doesn't taste very well. So you use the long, thin piece, chop it up very fine and just put it on a drying rack or on, uh, let it air dry. So that's what I'm gonna do with my remaining garlic skites because I've been enjoying them, cooking them and eating them all along. So that's what I'm gonna do with my garlic skites. So today I'm gonna to make a shrimp, um, garlic shrimp dish. I'm gonna have it this evening, so I'm not gonna finish cooking it today or uh, this morning. I'll cook it later, but it only takes 10 minutes to cook in the oven. So I'm gonna move you over to the kitchen, over to this the um, oven. So here we go, so here we go. So what I am doing is I heated up my pan already and it's pretty much to the point. I'm gonna take a tablespoon of olive oil and put that in. And then once that heats up for about two seconds, it won't take long because my pan's already hot. I'm gonna add my shrimp. Now the shrimp, only, I'm gonna put the shrimp in only for one minute because you don't want the shrimp too, too hot, uh, too cooked. And I think that's probably hot enough. Yep, you can hear it sizzle. So this is only, you only cook it for a very short time. And of course, shrimp doesn't take very long. It's less than a minute and it's already cooked. Once the shrimp is cooked, I'm going to add the garlic. I didn't want to put the garlic in first because as we know, garlic does not take long to cook. So I am going to add the garlic once the, once the shrimp are a little bit more pink. I'm going to flip the shrimp over so we can get them on both sides. There we are. And it smells delicious already. Anyone that likes shrimp, it is uh, divine. It's just the olive oil and the shrimp. There we go. Now I'm going to add, uh, it calls for a clove. So I have a clove in a little bit uh, of garlic uh, only because it's, um, it's a, it's a dish that is delicious. There we go. I'm gonna put that in there and I'm going to stir the garlic around with the shrimp. I'm also cut up a few, um, whoops, sorry, Rosie. I also cut up a few garlic skites. So I'm going to put those in as well because I want a little greenery and I was gonna add chives, but I thought, you know what? I have the garlic skites, so I might as well continue along with the garlic theme. So I'm just gonna stir fry that for a minute or two longer. This recipe really only takes maybe five minutes max and then 10 minutes to cook. So it's really quite a quick recipe. So as this stirs up a little bit, I am going to add in a very short time, some cream. Once the garlic skypes are, are uh, and the garlic is infused with the shrimp, and that pretty much takes care of that. So I'm gonna add some cream. Sorry, Michelle, you're not gonna get any of this dish, but uh, anyway, it's, uh, so I'm gonna add the cream. And it's a cereal cream, it's not a heavy um, coffee cream. And I'm going to stir fry that or cook that for a little bit longer. And once the cream starts, um, um, once the cream gets hot, then I'm going to add Parmesan cheese and uh, I'm going to add a little bit of pepper, maybe a little bit more just because I like pepper. And I'm going to add a dash of salt. I'm going to add, as I showed you earlier, I'm going to sprinkle the um, basil that I just picked out of my garden this morning, uh, less than five minutes ago, actually. Now I'm gonna add the Parmesan cheese, about a quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese. And I'm gonna put a cheese on top as well to make, so when I bake it, uh, roast it in the oven, it will 
cook up just perfectly. And then there'll be cheese on top with a little bit of basil on top of the cheese. So I'm gonna let this cook for a bit. Uh, Michelle, I don't know if you're ready or not, but it's gonna be a few minutes before this thickens. I'll show you the recipe at the very end, but at this point, there's nothing else to show other than the uh, food cooking. So I think we're gonna move on back to Michelle and uh, I'll show you how it looks at the very end. Is, is there any questions? Roz, it looks great. Yeah, I'm looking forward and, to it. And um, we'll look for, for, for you pulling the dish together. Just when you asked me what it was doing, I was taking a selfie with you behind me. So if anybody was watching on the other view, that's what they were seeing happen, just to let you know, Roz. So that's what was happening in your background. That looks absolutely beautiful. And I love those tips for cooking seafood. Some people have a propensity to cook it a little longer than it should be. So that's one of the other many great things we hope that we help you learn about living, eating in Atlantic Canada. So. One thing, one footnote I should say is that you really have to keep an eye once you put the cream in that you constantly stir. So if my back's to everybody, that's what I'm doing. So I'll talk soon. Bye. All right, Brian. Okay, so R Richard has prepared, um, I'm just gonna ask Richard to add a few garlic factoids for us. So one of the things that we always find really important is we look at the etymology of food, we really kind of wanna know how did it get here? Because you know, some things we've just we just figured they've been here for a while. Albeit garlic, thank you to China, but it's readily available around. So I'm gonna ask Richard to add a few pieces. If you were looking in the background, I was taste testing the garlic aioli that I made, and I'm gonna need to add a little bit more mayonnaise to it because I can tell you there won't be any vampires coming near this particular house today. We'll share a couple of fun facts about that. But I just want to add, I'm not going to make this recipe, but one of the other readily available is around, does anybody know what these are? Anybody want to guess which vegetable this is? Come on. Zucchini. 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 Thank you, Jacqueline from Vietnam. And I probably should have one of the regular green ones, which I do have as well, but they're, they're also in the fridge. So this was really beautiful yesterday shopping. These are all from Angela of Funny Farms Fresh Harvest and you know our local harvest. They are so delicious in different flavors. So what we did yesterday as a dish is and we had a beautiful steak from ANC Meats. So this would be a little bit of the beautiful dish that we had the steak. We fried up potatoes with a lot of garlic scapes. So thank you Roz for that and definitely the tip. So a lot of the so we don't use the tip like Roz did here because it can get a little, but everything from here down. And then we took, and I took the garlic cloves and I sliced these long and I rubbed all of the zucchini with garlic and then I broiled it. So what I did is take the raw zucchini up on, or the raw garlic on the raw zucchini and then I put it on the grill. And that was as simple as the seasoning I did. And I can say, because the zucchini tasted so delicious that it really just needed that extra piece. And then of course we chopped it with a little bit of salt and pepper. So before I go over to you, Richard, I'm just gonna show how that looked. And because we don't wanna drop it on my laptop, hopefully you can see those beautiful grill marks from being able to do that on the barbecue. So, and that, was a very, very simple dish and a unique way to use garlic that we don't always think about. So that's, so remember, we're taking one of those nice garlic cloves that we've done open and all the oils are open in it. And I think that that's something important to know. And then you take and you use that on your vegetables. And in a few minutes, my mom's gonna make some garlic toast and we're gonna show you how she's gonna show us that trick about using garlic toast. But Richard, let's get a couple of factoids from you before we go visit Ontario and your mom and your aunt's garlic adventure. You're on mute. Good morning, everyone. Um, this looks beautiful behind you, Richard. So for everybody that yeah. doesn't always get to see, that is our Atlantic Canada Language Academy School in the beautiful Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. And we have our classrooms inside that beautiful building. So Richard, thanks for sharing that with us all today. 
Yeah, and I'm just going to talk about garlic because, um, yeah, I have a bit of a sensitivity to it. So same way, I love it. Um, just in the same way I love ice cream, but uh, as, you know, someone who's lactose intolerant, I shouldn't really have it, you know? So, so I'm going to talk about it. But um, garlic is, as, um, as Michelle mentioned, mentioned earlier, it comes to us from Central Asia, and it's been with us for at least 8,000 years. There's archaeological records for that. Um, and it's been long established in the, in the diets of the Asians, the Pakistanis, Indians, and the Chinese, of course. Um, it first came to Europe via Egypt. And the Egypts, the Egyptians were known to um, almost worship it. In fact, it was found in Tutankhamun's tomb. There are garlic uh, bulbs made in Tutankhamun's tomb, <clears throat> tomb which um, could have been used either for to keep him safe or, or as a currency in the afterlife. Nobody knows for sure, you know, what it was. But interestingly, this is what the pyramids were built with, garlic, because the garlic was used to give the slaves strength, almost like a currency for them. This is what they ate. And um, <clears throat> the two big slave revolts in Egyptian history were because of garlic shortages. <laughs> so, so that's quite something. Um, from Egypt, uh, garlic went into the, it became fully immersed in the ancient color cultures of Greece and Rome. So it's, um, it's fully established there. And somewhere along the line, uh, we know that in ancient Greece, they used to, they, it was always known that there was medicinal and, and strength um, properties to it. But then there became some supernatural things that sort of started along this, this point. So, um, they used to hang garlic up when they were having, when, whenever there was a child being born. For some reason, that would help keep the child safe. So um, this might be where all the supernatural rituals began. And along with the medicinal um, benefits, which were, were well known, many cultures believe that garlic could protect us from evil spirits and um, not only ensure the healthy birth of a child, but because of this, many European countries practice the belief of placing garlic into the rooms to keep them safe from all kinds of things. So this wasn't just, um, you know, to keep your child healthy, but to keep the vampires out. You know, this is a, an important thing in Eastern Europe. Um, another funny one, kind of interesting one. Well, it actually protected against the evil eye. If somebody gave you the evil eye on the street, you know, one of your enemies, then you could, um, for some reason, if you were wearing some garlic, that would that would cancel that out. <laughs> and here's a, here's a really funny one. Um, <clears throat> they warded off jealous, nymphs okay nymphs it's a it's an old word for young single maidens women uh, it warded off jealous nymphs for um who were sent to tempt men away from their newly engaged brides or pregnant women so the idea i guess was that if you put on a bunch of garlic you were you're protecting yourself against your man being tempted away by a jealous nymph although i'm I kind of think maybe sometimes that had the opposite effect. I don't know. <laughs> in reality, in practice. <laughs> um, garlic. Richard, Richard, I love I love that. I feel like it's like, I do I want to put a necklace of garlic around or not? <laughs> well, that'll keep my man, thing. that'll keep my man happy. Come on. Right, I, I love you're like, I don't know. But you know, when I was eating the other day, I'm like, whoever's coming for dinner, we're all talking to each other. Richard, save some of those facts. We're gonna go over and visit your mom up in Ontario and Kathy for a few minutes and you hang on. We're gonna come back around to you for grab a few more facts. I was sitting here in the background and anybody had noticed, I um, taste tested one of my dips and it's certainly garlicky, but I know that the dips and the crackers that Maureen and Kathy have, have been made by some local growers in Ontario and they enjoyed and what I love is, and I'm sure we see this globally because as Richard just described, it is so readily available. So as the girls, you get, we can hear you girls. That's a good one there. Give them a little guidance as they get that. That's perfect. Sure. Right there, okay. Maureen. So okay. Maureen often okay. is in Liverpool, Morning. Nova Scotia, just so everybody knows. And she is Richard's mom. Richard's one of our teachers and our, our recruitment manager. Also, she's a world traveler. So she's having a little bit of a trek up to Ontario before she goes over to Ireland for some time. So Maureen, tell us what the two of you have found that is garlicky, garlicky delicious 
yes. Lake Huron. Okay. Thank you very much, Michelle. Yes, well, yesterday we, we decided we'd go out and, and uh, see what sort of garlic wonders we could find because we were very busy and we, didn't, we knew we weren't going to have time to actually be cooking anything or preparing anything. So it's, um, it's kind of the lazy person's presentation, I suppose, in a way, because the only thing I've really actually physically prepared so far today was the um, garlic dressing, which, is, which we um, are going to put onto this wonderful kale and tomato salad. So, and, and that dressing is so simple to make because really you just need olive oil. You can use, um, you can use um, white wine vinegar or apple cider or, or anything like that that you like. Um, this one is, um, that is it's a balsamic, a white balsamic, a white balsamic uh, vinegar, which is fine. That's really, really good. And then we, all, we have featured to put in, in that is pure Canadian honey. And so we made up a really lovely, oh, can you get me a spoon cap? Oh, sure. We made up a really lovely, yeah, dressing to go with our snack. So I'm, I'm just going to put a bit of this, you know, just show you the consistency. I don't know, can you see that, um, Michelle? Yeah. Right, good, okay. So yeah, we're just going to dabble that around. We got the tomatoes and kale yesterday at a special farm when we rode on our travels. So that's um, all prepared there. And then we went to this amazing cheese shop and found this wonderful chives and herb garlic cheese ball. And, and while we were there, we also found wonderful rosemary garlic olives <laughs> as well. And that is, you just see that? They look fantastic. And I love the fact, Maureen, that you've, you're have you showing how so many local growers are infusing these beautiful ingredients in, yeah. in, in making local uh, products to, to, which by the way, there is nothing lazy about what you're doing. It's a fantastic way to highlight these wonderful ingredients. Keep going. And then we found, and then we found in the same shop where we got the cheese and the olives, we found uh, herb and garlic thin crackers, which are displayed here. So we, we just, it was just fantastic, really. We got the kale in that in a different spot. And then we got this amazingly wonderful garlic as well, which we used this morning for preparing the, the actual dressing. So yes, I mean, it, it actually, it's just, it's so, it's so simple. And you can really, I'll just actually maybe slice this a little bit for you. Because we didn't want to just, Destroy how beautiful it looked. I did it all before. Uh, just going to put that on a cracker. So, just going to show how this is working. We're anxiously awaiting your Ontario garlic delight, and I'm sure the two of you are going to enjoy that. So, Jacqueline, are you ready? Because after we see Maureen, I think we're going to take a stroll over to Vietnam. Maureen, tell us what you got pointed out. This is our little snack this morning. So what's on the plate there? What's on the plate is the cracker with the, uh, the cheese ball, the garlic cheese ball, the olives, the salad. The garlic Very olives. Good. Yeah. So that's, that's our little snack this morning. And again, like I say, like, garlic is one of my favorite, my favorite items to use for cooking. I would put it in possibly every single thing if I can. <laughs> yes. So a big hello to everyone from Ontario and uh, to my son in Ireland. Hi, Aunt see? Kathy. Enjoy your garlic breakfast there. That's great. Well. <laughs> and, right? Uh, 
Thank you so much, ladies. Maureen, Kathy, enjoy. And we will look forward to seeing you amongst our travels. Kathy, we hope you can zoom in anytime and enjoy us. And that's, and, and seeing what we're cooking, eating and enjoying in Atlantic Canada. So if you guys wanna grab your mute so you can finish snacking and we're not gonna be in your way, we're gonna move on and we're gonna leap over to Vietnam and Ho Chi Minh City with our amazing Jacqueline. And then she always brings us um, techniques and different ways. And what I love is she always makes it so thoughtful to use ingredients. She knows that we can get here in Atlantic Canada. And we love being able to tell everybody all over the world that we there's many of the ingredients to cook your recipes here, but to use these wonderful fresh ingredients. So let's get some garlic chicken on the go. But I will tell everybody just before, I did find the green zucchini. So that finishes off, oh, and look, and it's got garlic stuck to the back of it. So there's your exact thing. Whenever you're cooking with garlic, you always end up with the little garlic um, all over the sides. So Jacqueline, I bet you this zucchini dish would taste great with that chicken dish you're gonna come out with. So tell us what you got going on. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Jacqueline's going to get her screen share open here. And one of the things, because a lot of us don't think about where it's 9.36 a.m. in the morning here in Atlantic Canada, she's 11 hours ahead of us. So one of the things Jacqueline always does is she prepares with some videos and wonderful cooking techniques. And I think that's also her lovely teaching skills coming out where she's able to get all those things. So how's your tech support going there, Jacqueline? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm finding just a moment, please. That's good. So while Jacqueline's getting that out, Jacqueline, as soon as it pops up, you get going on. So um, we talked about bruschetta. We're going to grill some bread here while Jacqueline's showing us the recipe. But one of the most traditional things that you're going to put into a nice uh, bruschetta, and these are fresh tomatoes, and I have to get really excited, picked in the garden. So these are growing out in the backyard. And it's funny because I have a plant that half the row is red and half the row is still green. So you just keep going out there and pick as you go. And then we have the beautiful fresh basil, as Rosalind was saying. And those, I've just put that in a little bit of salt and pepper. Normally the other ingredient is you put the raw garlic inside of this recipe, but we're gonna show you a little bit different technique. And we're gonna toast our bread and we're gonna rub that with the raw garlic. And I see Jacqueline's turned her camera off. So I'm gonna keep going through this little bit of this recipe so that, oh, mom, you wanna take that over and grill? And what we've done, go ahead. I think she's having some technical difficulties. So we're gonna roll with it here. I've taken these beautiful, and these are uh, a nine grain roll. They're none of them, they're all made with, they're a wheat free bread that I get um, at Oliver's German Bakery just down the road here from me in Hillsboro, New Brunswick. And so I get his rolls and then I cut them up because they make really perfect baguette sized pieces to put a nice little piece of bruschetta on. So, or bruschetta, you'll hear that pronunciation of it different ways. Uh, so what we've done is I've just taken them and I've made sure they're each cut about the same thickness so you see in there, it's, oh, I don't know, it's probably a centimeter because I want it to crust out, but I also want to be able to hold the, the, the little bit of the liquid and the tomato mixture that's gonna go on it. So if they're too thin, they'll break. So we drizzled a bit of olive oil on that. And like I said, my mom's gonna go over there and grill those and I don't think that pan was very hot. So the other ingredient that's really important in this is some really good olive oil. I actually am using some olive oil that I got in Italy when I was there in 2019 and I'm almost out. And my mother just said, I think you need to make a trip, right? And I see Richard going, so we definitely, I couldn't agree with you more. So this is really important. So I can say this, Italy, this came from the region of Calabria down in the north of Italy, or sorry, in the south of Italy. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that the other thing is using a really good balsamic vinegar. This particular one is readily available here and it's called Nona Pia's. It's a glaze 
it's a little bit thicker. I'm going to use that to drizzle on top of my bruschetta instead of putting directly into the mixture. It is a little bit thicker and it is one thing that I like about using a glaze because it allows it to um, stay on and it doesn't add so much liquid on your bread because we really like to keep that crispy bread. So as I was saying, the last bit of technique, so this recipe is really pretty easy. So I'm stirring up the tomatoes and that fresh basil. I say, see this cool little bowl? It says Funday Mud Pottery. And Jim Kitts from Funday Mud Pottery helped me make it. So I had the opportunity to make this down at our local farmer's market and um, have that really unique experience of um, actually getting my hands dirty in the mud. What's really cool about Jim is he uses the mud right from the river that comes in from the Bay of Funday, which is the highest tides in all of the world here where we live in this area. So that's pretty interesting. I can tell you this smells delicious. I can smell the freshness in the tomato, which is really interesting, and the basil. So once that freshness hits the bread, you'll see how that wakes up a little bit. So mom's gonna bring the bread out in a second. And I see Jacqueline is still starting at her technical difficulties. So Rosalyn, I'm gonna make and get a seat, get you to give me a big smile and a nod. I'm my like, bread's ready here, I think. Yeah. So it's coming over. But when I show, after I'm done showing this little, cause I'm gonna really show this bread cause I'm gonna eat it right away. Thank you, mom. So, and the other thing that I have out here is some grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, because, you know, that's one of the other things that's great with it. So you see, mom's got a beautiful toast. Can you see that caramelization on that? Nice and brown. I did do it on the barbecue yesterday when I did it, um, which is really nice. If you have an open flame, please keep an eye on it. I didn't burn it, but it's easier to do on an open flame. If you, wow, wait now. <laughs> I have the raw garlic in half and I just rubbed it on the hot bread. And it's like a beautiful garlic facial that's going on right now. It smells delicious. So I'm just gonna rub that around and I hope everybody can see that. So it's the raw garlic and I'm rubbing it on the crusty bread. And what's really nice is because the bread's crusty, it picks up on that and on the oils. And I don't think it's gonna need any more than that because it really does smell absolutely delicious. So. Let's get this up here. We're gonna to top that off with some of those beautiful tomatoes. You can see the chunks of the fresh basil and just a little bit of that Parmigiano Reggiano. So um, it smells as good as it looks, that much I can tell you. And so while we enjoy this bite, I'm gonna assemble the second one for mom to enjoy with me. And of course, you know what I'm having with that is that beautiful garlic soup that I made. So it's, uh, that's just gonna say a little bit of a garlicky day. So Rosalind, are you ready to go over to you and take a yep, visit definitely. that dish? Yeah, most definitely. I should let everyone know, I make a homemade pesto and I've forgotten one very important step. I, um, when you're cooking the oil, the garlic, the shrimp, then you add a pesto. So this is actually a pesto shrimp garlic dish. And I didn't show you when the pesto went in, but as you can see, I added the pesto with the cheese. Let me just put this down oh, so you can see it. So it's very, you'll see that my dish is now very green because I added um, homemade pesto with the garlic, the garlic skypes, uh, and uh, the, I put in a little bit of the, Thai uh, Vietnamese basil and regular basil out of my garden. I just picked less than 15 minutes ago or half an hour ago. So now I'm going to assemble the remainder. So now what I'm going to do is I grated up some Parmesan cheese, the same style that Michelle has, where am I? you can see that it's a big chunk of cheese. And this cheese is great because it lasts forever in the fridge. It doesn't get moldy. It's a beautiful cheese. So then you just sprinkle a little bit of extra cheese on top. I've, remember, I've also put cheese in the recipe. So it's a very garlicky, cheesy dish. So there's my Parmesan. And then I'm gonna just sprinkle a little bit more of the Vietnamese uh, basil 
and the uh, the Viennese basil and the uh, regular basil. And I'm going to add a little bit more fresh ground pepper on top. And then once I'm ready to eat this this evening, I am going to put it in the oven uh, under the broil just to heat it up uh, for 10 minutes. After and then it's ready, the cheese will be bubbly and beautifully golden brown. So that will work out really well. And that's the uh, the dish that we uh, that we have. So that's uh, the basil, um, the garlic, parmesan, uh, basil, uh, cheese uh, dish with shrimp. That's probably not the proper name, but it's the name that just came out of my mouth. So there you go. <laughs> Back to you, Michelle. And I see Jacqueline's got her recipe up on board. So thank you. And I'll talk soon. Thank you, Rosalind. Jackie. Jacqueline, are you ready to go? We can see your, your PowerPoint presentation. If you're ready to start sharing, there's your beautiful smile. So Rosalind, we will get to make sure we get a good picture. And I love the way that you're prepping those. And as she said, she's gonna finish those later and they'll be perfectly cooked because of the way she did that. So Jacqueline, over to you for some wonderful facts and your recipe. You're on mute, darling. Okay, now, uh, before I share the recipe of the Vietnamese food, I'd like to uh, show you a top benefits of garlic. Uh, by the way, I love garlic. I use garlic in almost every uh, dish I cook. Now, the first one is uh, it provides relief uh, for acne and asthma. Second one, it is beneficial in uh, digestion. Third, it is useful for curing earaches. Next, it is in treating eye infections. Then it helps cure hypertension. It reduces high cholesterol levels and it helps treat cough and cold. Uh, the last one, uh, I, I often use uh, garlic to treat uh, cough and cold in real life. Uh, now, uh, let's move on to the recipe I'd like to share with you today. That is a Vietnamese sweet and sour pork ribs. In Vietnam, uh, people often uh, eat uh, this dish with rice as a main main dish uh, for the ingredients. Of course, we need pork ribs, uh, chopped garlic, sliced onions. Uh, I used five cloves of garlic and uh, four onions. We also need some other ingredients and uh, they are oyster sauce, soy sauce, fish sauce, sugar, seasoning powder, and uh, lamb juice. Before we cook, uh, we have to make the mixture of sauce. Uh, I mix one tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon of seasoning powder, one tablespoon of soy sauce, one tablespoon of oyster sauce together. And then I mixed the pork with one and a half cornstarch and one tablespoon of seasoning powder. The reason why we uh, mix the cornstarch with the pork is uh, when the, uh, the dish is finished, the sauce is uh, the salt is sticky and it sticks around the ribs. Next, uh, we need four to five tablespoons of cooking oil and uh, fry the ribs until light brown. Uh, we don't need to, uh, to heat the cooking oil very hot. And we, we just cook uh, we just fry the ribs uh, quickly. Uh, no need for us to uh, to, to fry them. Uh, 
with a long term. And after that, we uh, remove the, the ribs. Next. Uh, stir fry the oil, the, the garlic and uh, onions until uh, fragrant. And then add the mixture of uh, oyster sauce, soy sauce, sugar, and seasoning powder. Mix up well. And after that, add the fried ribs and stir for about three minutes. And then we add some water and remember just enough water to cover the ribs. And cover the lid and cook for 15 minutes. Um, after 15 minutes, stir the ribs and uh, mix one tablespoon of fish sauce or uh, if you don't like uh, fish sauce you can replace it by soy sauce uh, mix one table uh, tablespoon of fish sauce with one tablespoon of sugar and one tablespoon of lamb juice then add the mixture into the ribs then you cook for another uh, five to uh, three to five minutes. And this is the product. And you know, my sons love this dish very much. Thank you so much. Do you have any questions? Who wouldn't love that? Who wouldn't love that? That was, it looks delicious. The next yeah, question is, she wanted to know when I was going to be making it. I mean, I will make that one soon. Jacqueline, it looks so perfect and as you display it. And I have to say this, there's a wonderful Vietnamese restaurant called Vien Dong here in Moncton, New Brunswick that we go to a lot. And, um, and I had some on Friday and it looked yours looked as good perfect whatever that blend is and in one of the dishes that we had with the lettuce and my mother was always saying i want to know what they put in the pickling for the carrots and the cucumbers so thank you for sharing all those little secret tips because yeah i'm so happy to hear that thank you so much and it looks absolutely scrumptious so i did update the board to say sweet and sour pork instead of chicken I think I was thinking of making chicken, so somehow I implanted that in my mind. Jacqueline looks absolutely beautiful. And as always, excellent cooking technique tips, which we always look forward to you. Richard, as I'm gonna get my garlic aioli to wrap up this, I wanted to go back over to see what other factoids you had in some garlic that we didn't finish up from last time. And also some of your thoughts on these amazing recipes that are coming out. I'm going to get my ingredients ready. We'll wrap it up with this wonderful garlic aioli that you can put on anything. So Richard, what else do you have to share with us, my friend? Well, I did have one question for Jacqueline. It's similar to the one I had last week. You're going to stay with me for a little bit when you come, right? So, good. <laughs> um, garlic, where, where do we leave off? One of the things, um, it has the medicinal uh, benefits that are well known. Uh, during the second, the first and second world war, it was used as an antiseptic a lot. And um, the one of the interesting thing is that Alexander Fleming, when he discovered penicillin in Toronto in 1928, uh, that's when that drug largely replaced garlic as an antiseptic at that point. But it came back into popularity during the second world war because there wasn't enough um, facilities to make enough antiseptics um, and antibiotics. And, and um, certain armies, well, the Russians, the Russian doctors just said, this is Russian penicillin, for example, because they just had none 
they had access to uh, to none. But surprisingly, and this is um this is something I found out, which is kind of interesting, is that food snobs in North America and and, and Northern Europe generally looked down upon garlic up until around the 1940s, believe it or not. And um, it was often associated with working class immigrant neighborhoods. And uh, one of the things I was reading here in the 1920s, you could be, it could be referred to as a Roman vanilla or Italian perfume. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but by the 1940s, it came back, uh, especially with that use during the war and started becoming popular then, um, which, Brings me to a question I have for, for my mom and for Helen and for Kathy. Was, was garlic a big part of your diet growing up when you were kids? Like, did your mother use it? I imagine you did, and I imagine, I imagine my mom did. But according to what I'm reading here, it wasn't really popular before the 1940s. So did your no, mother? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of interesting. And its popularity has really shot up recently. It's, it's only since the 1990s that its uh, usage has tripled in North America. Right. So even when I was growing up, it wasn't, it wasn't as big as it is now, you know? And- um, well, You know what, Rich, just, to, just to add to that, you know, Roz might even be able to speak to that because she's worked in the food industry over yeah. that 30 year time frame and to watch how that became more um, apparent on menus as it as it did it's interesting because mom said no like she didn't they didn't use a lot of garlic with her parents didn't cooking but she didn't use a lot when i did other than which is an interesting thing we would use garlic powder so it'd be curious to see when you know garlic powder and that dehydrated powder get introduced in because that would be something in a lot of mixes and dried mixes and things but i think you're right that those came into the into the 60s when those were first getting onto the marketplace so yeah um, and I want to say something when you're cooking with the dehydrated garlic powder, one of the things is to make sure is make sure it's not garlic salt. So when you're into the stores here and it, it's it, garlic salt is lovely, but remember it's cut with usually at least 50% of it is salt. So what I usually say to anybody is when you are out there and you're stocking your pantry, make sure that you get the one that's garlic powder or dehydrated or garlic. So you're not accidentally overusing your, gul your, your your salt intake. I also know that garlic has that nice salty, as we say, umami or flavor to it. So we'll oftentimes see people using a little extra garlic instead of putting some salt on there, which again is some added health benefits. But we're just wrapping up um, as to these times. And I really appreciate all the feedback that everybody's seeing on, on what they're observing. And Roz is just putting a tip out there, which is so funny, Roz, because guess what I have in my hand? Can you get me to talk a little bit right for me? The frozen garlic. So the last recipe we're gonna share with is the, the, the garlic aioli right there. If you go. So a couple of neat ways too. So this is one way we can buy garlic here in the store. Check this out. You see all the little tiny, and that's frozen. So this wonderful company called Topics and one cube equals one clove. Again, I've never used just one, but they're wonderful for sauces and different things. Also have done this myself, as Roz does it in an ice cube container or something like that, or this particular baggie, if you can see, was from a previous episode where I roasted 20 bulbs of garlic and I roasted a lot at once and then I put it into the freezer bag and then what I can do is break off chunks of it. And then I have that beautiful roasted garlic to be able to use in recipes. Because when you roast garlic, and I wanna make sure that sort of end on this, you really do change the flavor of garlic and you actually change some of the chemistry in it. And you wanna make sure when you roast it, you roast it down to like that gold brown, almost like the color of my cabinets behind me. And it gets into that really perfect color and it gets it into a, a sweet category. So it takes a little bit of that bite out of it and it definitely sweetens the garlic. So I'll often say to people, if when you're using certain recipes, raw garlic, you wanna watch the amount of raw garlic that you're using in it. But once you cook the garlic a bit, it does soften the flavor and it really brings a little bit more of a, a, a sweeter, fun flavor to it. Maureen's waving around some stuff there. So, this garlic aioli, 
And you also see this on a lot of recipes, Richard, your, your facts are quite interesting when I start to think about even my own years of eating around and now how much more prominent is on menus. So this is using one of our famous things as mayonnaise as the base of it. Uh, sometimes I do make that from fresh with some eggs and but today we're going to be using the level the lovely Hellman's mayonnaise to help us along the way. So in this particular amount, what I did so to give the ratios is I have a cup of mayonnaise. And then what I have in here is I have a quarter of a cup of the garlic scapes that I have put into my little food processor and then brought them down to that they were minced down. The other thing that does is it wakes up the oils and makes that much more flavorful. So I put I, I put about five garlic scapes, about a quarter of a cup of the fresh garlic scapes in there. And then I also took about 10 or 12 of our beautiful chives to put into it. But the other neat ingredient that I added because I wanted a balance is I added some fresh parsley. Parsley has a very different flavor than, than a basil or anything. And I find in this particular dip, it's a really great, fresh, herbaceous flavor that goes into it by using some fresh parsley. So I put about three sprigs of parsley about this side. And again, they're all pulsed up and they're diced up inside of it. And then I used about five cloves of the fresh roasted garlic in this particular recipe. So I will say, it's definitely wonderful. This is something you can use as a dip, but what it is lovely for if you're making a chicken burger in a sandwich, one of this is a really wonderful condiment to use with a few other things. But I do like to spice it up for a dip. So sometimes this is a good at home cooking tip. You can take that amount that I made and I will split half of it and put it into another bowl. So it's the same base dip, but I am going to do some chicken burgers later today. And I really want to have something that's a little extra spicy. So I've got Scott's buffalo habanero. So this is, and I want to say something about a buffalo sauce is it does have all your beautiful components of a hot sauce that we absolutely love. It's all made with fresh local ingredients. The hot is from the pepper. So this is from a habanero. But what makes it a buffalo sauce is it has been blended with a bit of butter. And that's why I'm giving it a good shake because you'll see the consistency in it. And I just pulled the safety seal off the top. And I think if Emily's still on there, I know Emily, there's some on route to you in Ontario. And what I'm gonna use in that is I'm in the amount I put, which is about splitting my dish in half, is stuck on my knife. Let's just say I'm not gonna lick that spoon really quickly, Scott, even though I'm sure it'd be really great, but I have a feeling the look on my face might say. So as I stir this, look at that color change from all those beautiful peppers. So that, and I put about a teaspoon and what's left in this is probably a half a cup of that dressing with a teaspoon of the hot sauce for the buffalo sauce. Here's my warning. When you're taking anything and you're making it a little hotter, don't put as much as you think at first, taste it and you can add more because oftentimes it's harder to go the other direction. So, oh yeah, that's fantastic. And I can tell you the heat balances a bit more of that garlic. So I wanna tell everybody Garlic should be used in everything. Here's some of our, our favorite seasonings that we use as a paprika garlic soup as the garlic maple pepper rub. So an homage to all the wonderful seasonings that you can get everywhere in the world. And it was really beautiful to do an ingredient that we know everybody has access to it. So we hope that you take the opportunity to repeat a couple of these incredible recipes at your home before you can get a chance to come here to Atlantic Canada and be part of ours. So any questions from anyone as we say thank you from our kitchens to yours. And I will tell you next week is our one year anniversary. So thank you to everybody on here and, and for all of you that come in week after week and explore what we have to cook and eat. 
here in Atlantic Canada. And the theme is going to be is some of our favorites. So please go onto our Facebook page. You can send us a note directly. Let us know what recipes that you might want to see again, or if there's something really specific that you would like to see. And you've got some upcoming episodes of blueberries and beer and some hodgepodge and some real traditional Atlantic Canadian things through August. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, mom, as always for making sure that I have everything I need ready to roll. Thank you everyone, have a good time, bye. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, bye.